Oh, hey there. How are you doing? Oh, me. I'm doing all right. Gargoyles was a cartoon series by Disney. Though I never really sat down to watch an entire episode of Gargoyles, I remember it faintly from the Disney weekday afternoons. I used to watch those Disney weekday afternoons all the time for Tailspin and DuckTales. Those were my go-tos. And once they started airing Goof Troop, Darkwing Duck, and Aladdin, I moved over to Nickelodeon, was watching shows like Hey Arnold, Double Dare, and Keenan and Kel. All while fantasizing about that delicious old Topanga from Boy Meets World. Enough about all that though, today we're going to look at Gargoyles for the Sega. It's actually a Sega exclusive and was released in 1995 for the system. While I was out looking through games, this one caught my eye, so let's have a look at it, eh? Alright, from what I gather around YouTube and the internet in general, this game is an underappreciated gem. It's a game that gets overlooked and is really damn good. <laughs> I don't know, maybe my taste in games and how they should function is a convoluted mess. Perhaps I have it all wrong here, perhaps the salt is blinding me, but I have no love for this game. Underappreciated gem, this game is no more than a soggy turd floating in my toilet, and I will be damned if I start appreciating the soggy turds floating in my toilet. Now firing this game up, I must admit, these graphics are wicked. This is no colorful Toontown game. The graphics had me anticipating something glorious around the corner, but it wasn't there. Around that corner is some dude trying to mug you for playing Pokemon Go in the middle of the night, and I don't want any part of that. You control Goliath, who is the protagonist in this game. You're a gargoyle, which is pretty sweet. You have two melee-based attacks, a three-swipe combo move and a throw. You're able to jump and double jump, while mid-air you can execute a ground attack where you pounce downward. It's a pretty useful move as it does good damage and it's relatively safe. This move beyond damaging enemies is used to break barriers below you. You will be busting through concrete floors or skylights of skyscrapers. On top of this downward thrust move, you have a charge attack, which also will be used to bust through walls, and it does damage enemies as well. The charge move isn't as effective against enemies as the downward thrust, because one of the biggest problems with this game is when you hit enemies, it doesn't stun them and leave them open to attacks. Nah, they can hit you all they want while you're trying to hit them. I say trying because the controls just feel bad. One of your most useful moves is that throw move. It often one hits enemies. Problem is, it's hard to execute. Half the time while you're trying to throw an enemy, you end up facing the wrong way simply because the input to turn around has such delay on it. So to be successful, your best bet is to ignore enemies or just pounce on all of them with your downward thrust move. Like I was saying though, if your attacks could interrupt enemies, it wouldn't be so bad and then you would have time to position yourself, but sadly you don't. So the opportunity to lay some quick attacks and combo them with a throw isn't there, and I think they had an opportunity to give us some cool arcade style combat, but they didn't. And part of the reason it's not there is that this is a Disney game, so expect washed out combat and a bunch of swinging and climbing around. It's usually how they work. Oh, late night retro, maybe the game's just too hard for you. The game is hard, it's not easy, even when you play on easy. Sure, navigating through levels becomes less a chore on easy mode, but the game is still just filled with such unsatisfying platform and horrible boss fights. On top of this, you only have a total of 10 lives before it's game over. You start with 5 lives and you can continue the game once. There is no password system, so you can't go back to the level you were on if you die. If you die, you have to suffer through everything again. I would rather be bitching about some stupid Why super long password I have to enter so in the game long. than here bitching about having to play through the shit I already have played through and have no desire to play it again. Unfortunately, that option isn't there. Now on stage 1, I didn't mind the platforming. It became somewhat of a chore, but we can say a chore because maybe it was a tad difficult. By stage 3 though, I'm done. This is some of the stupidest crap I have to do in a game. Just look at this. I'm trying to climb up a damn skyscraper swinging off lights and flagpoles. If you aren't lined up exactly, you're going to take a fall and have to redo the same bullshit over and over again. And on top of that, just crappy enemies always getting in my way. Sometimes while swinging, you can't attack, so your purpose becomes to avoid them. And even when you can attack, it becomes useless because the hitboxes on enemies are asinine. Everything about this game has to be aligned perfectly from his combat to his platforming or just get wrecked fuckboy. I mean even the charge move I was talking about is finicky. Your gargoyle only starts running if he has enough room to. You can't force him to run to do the charge, you need enough real estate to execute it. And you need this move to break down some walls, so a lot of times you find yourself walking yourself back to have enough room to be able to pull off this charge move going forward. This just leads to slowing the game down and making it feel even more clunky. 
The game is just too damn finicky. It's been a while since I haven't finished a game before giving my thoughts on it. It's also been a while since I rage quit a game as well. But this Gargoyles game is responsible for both of those things. Sad thing is, this game only has 5 levels to it, and I was on level 3. I just couldn't bring myself to using save states or cheat codes, and had no desire to finish it legitimately. So guys, in closing, if you liked games such as Aladdin and Lion King, I probably would say go ahead and try this out. It feels a lot like those, except reskinned. For me though, the stupid swinging, the unsatisfying combat, and bosses are just too exhausting for me to even have fun with. I love the dark theme, the gut-wrenching cries of the slain foes, the graphics, and the animations, but in the end, I can't recommend this game. This is Late Night Retro. Thank you for watching. Until next time.